Welcome to Bacon's Books. Today we're going to be reading or looking at The Man Who Solved the Market, How Jim Simons Launched the Quant Revolution by Gregory Zuckerman. Let's get started. But before we do, I want to thank everybody for watching the other videos. I've done a couple now. It's been a lot of fun and I've gotten great feedback. So I thank you and I appreciate all of you uh, for hanging out and talking about books with me. I love to do it. So most people have probably never heard of Jim Simons and that is mostly by design. Jim Simons is one of the most successful investors of the last 50 years. And if you have that sort of success, if you literally create a money printing machine in your garage, you're probably not going to tell that many people about it or how you did it. You want to keep that a secret. And that's what Simons has done with his hedge fund uh, Renaissance Technology. They've been very secretive. So this is a really interesting book. Uh, Gregory Zuckerman, who I believe is from the Wall Street Journal and has written a couple of other uh, interesting books, has done a complete deep dive into this hedge fund, how they did what they did, interviewing past employees, uh, reading about strategies, interviewing their competitors, and just built this kind of mosaic of this, of this firm that's been so secretive up until now. So just how successful is Renaissance technology or Rentech as they call it? Over the last 30 years, Renaissance technology has harvested close to $100 billion of profits out of the market. $100 billion, which is ridiculous to think about, you know, some three or four dozen people in an office on Long Island, not even on Wall Street, they're just in their office printing money essentially uh, with this trading algorithms that they've developed. So if there was a Mount Rushmore of investors, it would probably be Warren Buffett, Jack Vogel who started Vanguard, Peter Lynch who was big for Fidelity, and then Jim Simons, there's a real good argument that he'd be up there. Because what they did that was so novel and revolutionary was using computers and data analysis techniques to look for basically the signal in the noise of, of all the stock market data and really apply you know scientific rigor to investing. Up until that point back in the 60s and the 70s investing was done by dudes with like cigars talking to each other over a martini at lunch thinking you know it, it wasn't a, such an exact science like it is today. So how did they do it? Jim Simon's background is actually a, as a mathematician. He's not some business whiz who uh, came up through the traditional Wall Street form. He comes from academia. Uh, previously to being in a university setting, he actually worked as a code breaker for the US government breaking Russian military codes during the Cold War. After that, he was able to move into, he was offered a position as chair of the math department at Stony Brook uh, State University of New York. So it was interesting because he had a background in code breaking, they approached the market in a, in a very similar way to code breaking. They consolidated all the data they could get their hands on, so all the public sources, all the private sources, and then actually gathering it themselves, you know, writing down every day, and this is in the 70s, before there's digital uh, data coming through, before the internet, they're literally pen to paper every day, opening price, closing price, high of the day, low of the day, volume, and sticking that onto the wall, pieces of paper onto the wall. Um, so when the computer and the IT revolution did finally come into the 80s and 90s, they had a data base that nobody else could match because they had been doing this all by hand for so long. They would amass all this data, run it through a supercomputer, and then have the smartest brains they could get their hands on, do the analysis, create hypotheses, and then test them and continually iterate, changing, updating, improving their models. Um, what they were looking for were things called anomalies. Generally, when you're looking at price data in the stock market, it's pretty close to random. It's difficult to, to find patterns and almost impossible to predict. 
What they were able to do was find these small anomalies. For example, when a specific, say a currency or a commodity had a specific price action on a Friday, it tended to continue that same action on the Monday and then the next Tuesday it might fall back on its regular trend. But finding that small little anomaly was critical for Renaissance technology and it gave them the edge they needed to make all this money. So the story is really of them going through this process, finding uh, the data sources, finding the right people. Uh, later in, in, the, uh, in the book, they hire a lot of people from IBM who were involved in the speech to language translation. And they found that a lot of the same skill sets to translate a language could be applied to uh, looking in the market data for patterns. It's a really fascinating story. I would highly recommend it to anyone, especially if you're interested in the stock market. This concept of using data to develop your investing strategy, which is what portfolio management does now, but in the 70s and 80s, this was cutting edge stuff of looking at um, the history of prices and seeing how things moved over time. I'll definitely recommend this book to my friends. I'll give it a five out of five with one Caveat being, uh, it's a five out of five if you're interested in the market and finance and how investing works. I think if you didn't have that underlying interest, like I work in that business, so I, I love that sort of topic. Uh, if you didn't have an interest there, you might find it a little heavy, kind of jargon, uh, technical, things about you need a little bit of a background to, to understand what's going on. But otherwise, I thought it was really well done, well researched. A lot of interesting opinions and interviews in there. So definitely uh, a, an interesting book to read. So thank you for watching. I've been at it a couple weeks now. I've gotten great feedback. So I appreciate all of you out there who are interested in this and sending me encouragement and, and watching the videos. It's, it's a lot of fun. So I'm, I'm happy to keep doing it. Uh, if you haven't yet subscribed, go to, over to YouTube, click on the subscribe button and I'll keep it going. Check out my Instagram, uh, Bacon in Redondo, to find out more. I've got a bunch of other book reviews that I've been doing. Thank you so much. My name is John But yeah. Thank you so much. My name is John Bacon. This is Bacon's Books, and I will see you next time.